Hey everyone, today we're talking about a forsaken Chinese study method that was literally designed to train scholars under brutal pressure, yet almost no SAT student uses it. Okay, it's not about grinding harder, and most students just completely ignore it. Okay, yet it might be the biggest SAT cheat code you've ever heard of, and once you learn it, cramming just feels stupid. And if you skip this, you can feel even worse. Alright, so this is quite literally the secret to consistent results. Alright. So first, let's address a couple of things about Confucian and Taoism principles, because modern day, you know, Chinese academics and educational systems in Asia is really based on rote memorization and tons of repetition. But if we go back in history, we can drive a couple key principles, obviously based on Confucianism and Taoism, such as Harmony 315, Effortless Action. You can read through all these. They're cool and all, but we're really trying to get into the meat and potatoes of this of what we actually need to do in the practical applications of that, all right? So let's first explore exhibit one, all right? And that is to, well, a practical action is what you should be doing at the start of your study sessions is to explicitly state your intentions. If you just go in trying to improve your score, you can't just say, oh, I gotta study for the SAT. I gotta do 50 practice questions, okay? You need a specific conceptual area that you've noted down as either your weakness or your strength because you also want to work on your strengths but you also want to address your weaknesses and so you have to intentionally use your time to address each of those areas okay that's why it really helps to be specific if i have a note card on the side or a sticky note or something and i write down a specific task for me to do then i'm more likely to follow through on that because if i don't complete it then at the end of the day if i'm scrolling on my phone and i look at that i have to do it and i feel guilty Right now, it's not to bog you down, but it's to keep you accountable, and that's why this is so powerful. Okay, you really want to eliminate those distractions, take accountability, and it's also an indication of your process. And if that sounds basic, just wait till we get into the iron forged approach. And if I'm being completely honest, guys, none of this is complete rocket science. It is really just getting down to the nitty gritty, getting good at the fundamentals, because that's all you really need. Okay. But if I was someone who was trying to improve my SAT score, what would I do? Well, I would break my goal of improving my SAT score into a couple sub goals and then micro goals. Okay, this, so this really goes down back to being super specific with your intentions and for your study sessions. So I have my overall goal, say that's scoring a certain amount on the SAT. Then your sub goals, this can vary, but for most people, it's going to be getting a certain score in math, certain score in English. And then your micro goals, right? So three micro goals per sub goal. So for math, I have specific action tasks in conceptual areas maybe I want to target. And the same thing for English. And you can vary this based on however you need to address your weaknesses and strengths. Okay. But let's move down to our iron forged approach. All right. Because this is really where you can be actually taking action with this secret Chinese method of studying for the SAT. Okay, essentially, if you get a problem, your goal is to find five different ways to solve that problem, or as many for maximum efficiency. What does that mean? Well, basically, regardless of the type of question you get, if you solve it in one way, sure, you'll get super good at it, right? The thing you have to understand about the SAT is that the conceptual ideas that it tests, the actual knowledge you need, is very bare bones, right? I mean, some questions a kid in elementary school could solve them, right? But the tricky thing about the SAT is, especially if you're trying to score high and score perfect on the SAT, or trying to score above your potential, right, and reach your full potential, in that case, what happens is that the SAT loves to take basic concepts, right, stuff you're familiar with, and then spin it in mysterious ways you haven't seen before. And that's the problem with solving certain types of questions over and over again with the same method, right? The education system nowadays is really uh, keen on this logical approach, you know, take step one, step two, yada, yada, yada. And that's great and all for that type of assessment. But for the SAT, you can't have that mindset. You have to create what we call neural networks, okay? So you need new pathways within your brain. And the way you develop them is by solving certain questions multiple times in different ways, even if it seems super overkill and excessive. Okay, so if I have this problem right here, right? Function f is 25x plus 30 was the value of f of x when I plug in two. Literally 99% of people 
are just going to plug in 2 for x, right? 25 times 2 is 50, plus 30 is 80. That's great, right? I mean, I think on the SAT, that's what you should do as well. You should get this in like 2 seconds, right? But it is worth it for some more medium difficulty questions to look at it, identify the type of question, and then look at different ways you could solve it, right? So for this question, you could do algebraically, you can graph it, you can do a table. I mean, obviously, some of these are not as practical, but given the question, you need to be able to evaluate these different methods because, say, if I give you a question like this, right, now we have a triangle inscribed inside a circle, well, no, oh, crap, now my, you know, different ways of solving problems I've done in the past don't really work, right? So you have to really evaluate your options. What can you use, right? Stuff by themselves like coordinate geometry, trig, similar triangles, you're probably familiar with, right? If you've taken geometry, you've worked with congruence and similarity theorems and all that, but now you're combining it with a triangle that's inscribed uh, inside a circle, right? That is just completely overblown. Maybe you can find the area of a circle, you can find the area of a sector, I mean, it's just formulas, but now when you have a completely different spin and twist on it, maybe you haven't done a question like this. Or if you have, I mean, probably not dozens, right? I mean, it's not every day you get a question like this on the SAT. So you really need to be able to work on those easier fundamental problems in a way that builds your skills for these harder questions, right? That's why you have to solve those questions in different ways. All right? If you find different ways to solve a problem, that really shows that you understand the fundamental basics and then you master that problem, then you master the concepts behind that problem, and ultimately, then you can solve any problem regardless of the different way that the SAT spins it. But for this last section of the video, let's first talk about a quote from Confucius himself, who said, revealing what you have learned and learning anew, you are fit to be a teacher. Okay, so that ties directly into exhibit three, which is tackling your own ego and also making connections with this method to the end. Okay, so let me zoom out a little bit. So if we haven't learned already, testing well on the SAT is largely psychological, just like any test, right? You can have all the knowledge, you can have all the preparation, but if you're feeling sick or maybe your morale is down on the day, um, this is extreme, but if you're ready for the SAT on the way to the SAT testing center, you get into a car crash, I mean, oh my God, yeah, you're completely thrown off. That's how much psychological factors really play in here. So how can you play this to your advantage, or at least not get a disadvantage from this basis? Well, you need to understand a couple things. First off, if you're a student with, say, a strong math foundation, or maybe in your friend group or in your school you're considered smart, you have to realize that that does not, like literally no, no correlation with success on the SAT. Now, obviously, there might be some implied association between, um, you know, being in a higher level math class and having higher SAT math scores or English scores, yada, yada, yada. That's a topic for another video, but basically you have to understand that even if you are in an advanced math class, the way questions are tested on the SAT, you really have to put in the work. And this goes for the entire video, right? I'm not going to sit here and say, yo, 10 minute YouTube video, watch it, plus 250 SAT points. It's crazy. No, it doesn't work like that. You have to take the theory. Okay. You take the theory and put it into practice. Okay. That's how you get good at the fundamentals and that's how you really improve your score. Okay. You can't cheat the system like that. You can cheat it by having certain specialized knowledge like the stuff in this video, but then if you don't put it into action, well, someone who's grinding 10,000 practice questions while you're just sitting there on your phone, yeah, they're gonna do better than you, okay? All right, let's 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 just end the video here with talking about a couple last pointers, okay? When you're reviewing your mis mistakes, you have to really make sure you note them down, right? Because if you note these problems down, then you know the concepts and areas that you need to uh, tackle. And also, when you struggle with these certain concepts, try and teach it to other people, right? Because you're trying to uh, teach it, that means you're trying to simplify that concept. It makes it easier for yourself to understand. It also uh, helps you understand the different gaps that you have within your own knowledge. I'm back to one of those Confucian principles of having peace. The day before the SAT, you really want silence, right? Don't be on your phone. Obviously, get good rest. You want to also really mentally review the concepts that you learned, right? If you studied something for that day, what did I learn? What questions stumped me? Uh, maybe have a sheet where you track key formulas or key problems that come up super often that you get annoyed by and then write down the steps on how to solve them, the different ways you can solve them, right? There's a lot of ways you can spin this, a lot of ways you can personalize it to adjust for your own learning abilities and your own preferences, okay? And ultimately, that's gonna help 
you not just just go beyond memorization right go to a point where you're understanding the exam right because i understand that maybe you're not learning crazy things or crazy concepts it's not super fun for the sat or whatever but it's the sat man. play to the games if you know college board's rules right it's a game play by the rules and you'll win all right so that does it for the video guys if it helped make sure you guys subscribe for more videos just like this and maybe share with a friend. I'll see you guys in another video.